gentlemen. So you guys have gone up against uh, some pretty good traditional tailbacks, which we don't see as much anymore in college football. Now you're going up against a quarterback that can do a lot of what those guys did, but in a different way. How challenging is that for you? It's very challenging. He's um, he's he's a great athlete, and he's in a really really fitting scheme for him for, for what his skill set is. He's very good at throwing the deep ball, so he really really keeps you honest in the passing game, and he is a tremendous runner. And, he, and he's very physical too, so uh, it'll, it'll be a great challenge for us. When you evaluate film of a team that's doing something dramatically different than what they did before, how much do you weigh the progression as they go through each week and get better based on what you expect to see? Well, if you just take the Tennessee game, they went up and down the field on Tennessee and they really shot themselves in the foot with five fumbles. If they don't have five fumbles, you know, that game could look, you know, much different. So you take that game and you look at where they were then, look at where they are now, and you're looking at a team that doesn't turn the ball over as much. And that's when you're seeing 49 nothing against Boston College, scoring in the 50s against East Carolina. So if they protect the football, and you can see them getting exponentially better at that every week, protecting the ball, um, getting better at the scheme, you got to realize they've only been in the scheme for four weeks now. So you can see them getting better and better as the weeks go on, uh, and, and it's it is challenging. It's very challenging. Just not just the fact that they've got some really good players at very critical positions, key positions, but the scheme is challenging as well. If you went through the film, what did you like best, and what, did, what frustrated you the most? For uh, this it was it was. If you go back and you point out the positives, we're at the end of the third quarter and we've given up 14 points. You go to the fourth quarter, you saw a team that couldn't make any, uh, we couldn't make any productive plays when the game was on the line. That was very frustrating, which was a flip of the week before. So if you take the last quarter of the week before and the first three quarters of this week, you're more in line with what we're looking for as a defense. Um, so that's frustrating because I felt like the game was on the line. We had chances to put the game away as a defense, third downs. We went into the fourth quarter and, and we had won every third down. And we get to the fourth quarter and we couldn't win a third down. So again, I think that points and it goes back to the inconsistencies that we're having on defense. Um, we see it, we know it, we got to continue to improve. When Larry has brought up that we're going to just clean up mistakes, we, you would see fireworks from our team. That's kind of what he expressed to us. And I think he was talking here. about both sides of the ball, but is there a certain thread with the defensive mistakes you see? Is it assignments? Is it as simple as not doing you know, the assignment? It's, or? it's still a mixture, yeah. and that's what's frustrating. It's still a mixture of a guy here or a guy there. Um, it's a mixture of in critical times in the game when we have to have a play. Somebody's a little bit out of position. Um, you know, on the 41-yard dump off to the tailback again, it was, it was a missed assignment. And so those things are, are what we need to clean up. Uh, the players know it. Uh, we're very adamant about getting those cleaned up. It's about time we do it, right? Uh, and if we ever pull that thing together and actually do what we're supposed to do for a 60-minute game, we've got a chance to be a really good defense. Right now, we're too sporadic. And um, that's why we practice. What, what, what allowed you to be better against certain longer stretches? Down, it's pretty good, right? Uh, you know, again, it's us just being, doing, doing your job, doing the little minute details of what your job description is, and that's where we get very. Um, that's where we get frustrated because you see glimpses of what happening. But we're playing against really, really good people. And if you're not right in the right spot, you know, if you're not, if you're, if you're, you know, three feet away from where you need to be, when you play teams like Florida State who have great players, um, you know, they're going, to, they're going to make you pay for it. So again, we're we're still a work in progress. I'm still very encouraged that we can and will get these things fixed. Um, we just got to go out there on game day and produce. Larry said the spread that Virginia Tech runs is similar to some things that UNC does yes. when do on offense. How does it help? How is that, is that a factor? Uh, I think it's a factor, uh, at least I hope, that the benefits of it are going to be that the tempo, you know, they're going to up-tempo you and, and obviously try to run a lot of plays. So the tempo that our offense runs, us seeing that, you know, pretty much every day in practice, that's helpful. It's very similar in some ways with some, with some certain things. 
Um, basically, the run-pass option game is very similar. Um, so that that's going to be helpful. Uh, but there are there's some distinctive differences as well. But those things that I just mentioned, the fact that we see them every day, um, we at least understand them, and we understand the you know, the how crucial it is to be able to get a line, a tempo and to be doing things that are going to take away the run pass option. In, in terms of you guys being sporadic, am I picking on Andre Smith if I if I point the finger at him? Um, in terms of being able to keep everybody together? No, 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 you can't point at him. No, it's 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 starts with me. You point at me, and uh, that's, that's where it starts. Um, and then it goes to equally everybody on the defense. Equally, equally spread spread the wealth because it's it's equally everybody. Let me ask you this way, you know, if you had to bring up Shopman and Shaquille here, would you still have the same problems with being sporadic? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, you know, that's, that's a real hard if question, you know. Uh, I will say this, that there's definitely experience issues. Mm -hmm. There is. You can't, you can't deny that there's a lot of guys out there that haven't played a lot and there's a lot of youth out there and and a lot of times, some of the problems or some of the issues that pop up are used in, you know, in many cases, dealing with young guys. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an excuse, it's just the reality of it. So again, you know, I think the more experience you have, Jeff Schottmer played a lot of football before he ever came. We could, we could move him on a Wednesday to a different position mm -hmm. and he could do it because he's experienced a lot of football. These guys will one day be at that point. They're not now. And, you know, that's, that's what we have to live with right now. And we're going to have fun trying to get better and improve. And we really feel like we can and will. Um, and it's, it's time that that happens. How's the health of your defensive line, in particular, Dewan Drennan? Do you expect to see him in time soon? Do you can say about that? Uh, you know, he's, he's working. He's working in that direction. Uh, I don't know, you know, everything's going to be kind of uh, pretty much a day-by-day -day scenario with him. But he's trying to get better. Good. You good? Hi, right. guys.